Marty Stauffer. Every summer in Alaska, the salmon make a massive upstream spawning run. When they do, the largest meat-eating land mammals in North America also gather together. Up to a hundred huge brown bears congregate along McNeil River to feast on the spawning salmon. Usually these bears are loners. With their enormous size and lack of natural enemies, they have little use for group life. For most of the bears, the annual summer gathering is their first close contact with others in 10 months. Even so, they're not exactly social. They compete seriously for this important food. Each animal claims and defends a fishing spot. It's a matter of survival as the bears recover from the last winter and prepare for the next on this protein-rich fish. But there's a great deal of humor, too, in how these huge bears approach the task of getting the salmon out of the raging river. And the cast of animal characters is as varied as it is intriguing. Join me now for a look at one of nature's most awesome and amusing spectacles, here at Alaska's River of the Bears. Alaska, our largest and wildest state, is home to some of the world's largest and wildest animals. The brown bear is a native of cold northern regions around the globe. But there's only one place where these great solitary creatures gather in any number. In southern Alaska, the McNeil River flows into Kamishak Bay. About a mile upstream from the bay, a section of rapids presents an obstacle to migrating salmon and a unique feasting opportunity for bears. Protected by the McNeil River State Game Sanctuary, as many as 80 bears gather each summer. Surprisingly, the world's largest carnivore is not very carnivorous. The brown bear's diet, like that of most bears, consists more of grasses, roots, and berries than it does of meat. But when early summer greens the Alaskan Peninsula and swells the waters of the McNeil, the bears do not come to the river to eat grass. What draws them is a certain type of Pacific salmon, fattened from years of feeding in the sea years of preparing for the major and final journey of their lives.
The salmon are fat, but not the bears. A long winter has claimed last year's food reserves, and females with nursing cubs to support are especially thin. But now it's time for the cubs to take the first steps toward the day, a year or two from now, when they'll be weaned. And also time for the mother to regain her strength. Male bears, boars like this one, and sows too young to breed, have only their own stomachs to fill. But the mother bears sometimes have as many as four cubs to feed, and to teach to feed themselves. The cubs learn by example, if they're lucky. Their mother is watchful, but does not coddle them. As the cast of characters gathers, the mother bear's first concern is to stake out a good fishing spot. Her instinct tells her that her two cubs are strong enough to follow along, at least through the shallower currents. Bears are natural swimmers and divers, as powerful in the water as they are on land. I've seen as many as 20 bears at once here along the McNeil. As they gather, so do the scavenger seagulls. And with the commotion comes increased competition for fishing spots. And with neighborhood tensions running high and her fishing luck running low, even the most patient mother gets a little irritable. Each mother has her own individual method of fishing. Her cubs learn the way she did, by example and by trial and error, as the family searches out the most rewarding currents and eddies. Spring and early summer is the normal mating season for brown bears, but the sows possess an unusual adaptive mechanism called delayed implantation. Only when a sow has grown fat enough on salmon and vegetation will the fertilized eggs inside her begin to grow. It's no wonder that a mother's first concern is food. At last, a male bear catches a fish and leaves his place to dine and dry out on the riverbank. Immediately, the female and her two cubs take over. Another female has already caught a fish for her three offspring, who waste no time digging in. The first female scans the river, looking almost like a tennis fan. By midday, most of the bears in the area have gathered for what seems like a pleasant picnic. But things are not always so peaceful, as these two older but still inexperienced cubs are about to learn. A big boar is looking for a fishing spot in the afternoon sun. 
As if oblivious to his presence, the two impetuous youngsters carry on with their awkward fishing tactics. The big male is patient, or maybe he's just puzzled by all this frantic activity, but he doesn't stay puzzled for long. Almost always, the biggest bear claims the best fishing holes. But frequently, the question is, who is the biggest bear? sets off another. survival is not to fool with mother nature. The second is definitely not to fool with a mother bear. In the confusion of the fight, the salmon slipped back into the river. But all the mother bear knows is that it's gone, and she thinks the stranger took it. Though five species of Pacific salmon migrate up the McNeil to spawn, the bear's favorite is the smaller, calico-colored chum salmon. There are as many fishing styles as there are bears. Some, like this young female, are very active in the water, while others are more slow and steady. and still others seem to depend on someone else to make the catch for them. While some bears flounder around, this big boar seems to know exactly where to find a fish. Meals are usually taken ashore to be eaten. I've seen an experienced bear like this one catch and eat two salmon in 15 minutes with only a half dozen dives. Primarily vegetarians, brown bears also feed on insects, rodents, and carrion. But it's only during the summer salmon run that they truly live up to their name as carnivores.
While some bears prefer a vantage point on the rocks above the water, many seem to enjoy getting right down into it. The salmon aren't especially hard to locate, but they are hard to catch. One favorite technique might be called the midstream swipe. But by far the most widely used method is the plain old belly flop. The object of the belly flop is not just to create a thousand pound splash, but to pin a salmon against the rocky river bottom and to get a good grip with claws or teeth. Bears are highly intelligent animals, and no two of them are alike. In July, when the hungry bears gather at the start of the salmon run, every last scrap of each fish is devoured. Later, when they've started to fatten up, they may eat only the roe and leave the rest. I've seen a bear eat as many as eight 10-pound salmon in one meal before taking time out for an afternoon nap. As the summer goes on and the bears gain practice, their fishing methods become calmer and more deliberate. They're no less eager, but aggression subside as they concentrate on gorging themselves. They make fewer misses, and they even seem to come up with bigger fish. This young boar seems almost to be flaunting his prize catch of the day. By late afternoon, each bear has had at least one chance at a fishing spot, and contentment sets in along the McNeil.
salmon run is over, the bears must resume their normal vegetarian diet, a diet that alone could never provide the layer of fat needed to survive the long, cold months of hibernation. In fact, without sufficient fat reserves, the mechanism for hibernation is never triggered, and the bear cannot fall asleep. This makes for a very grouchy bear. The mother bear must protect her own interest as well as that of her cubs. But perhaps she's also teaching them a lesson in aggressiveness, a lesson that might help them survive as long as this battle-scarred old boar. Stiffened by age, this magnificent granddaddy weighs over 1,600 pounds. Though he's still able to fish, this could be his last season on the river. Even now, he keeps an aloof distance from the other bears, as if sensing that he may no longer be able to compete. No matter what his fate, the old boar has already lived a full life. Like these young cubs that might even be his offspring, he too weighed only about one pound at birth. Like them, he learned in his early years to claim and catch his share of McNeil's bounty. Each summer, he grew stronger and more skilled, though no doubt he too could tell tales of the one that got away. To these younger bears that will repeat his life, he leaves behind a legacy of summers of plenty in a wild and beautiful land where bears can still be bears far from the strongholds of man. By the end of summer, the bears have eaten their fill of salmon and have grown a reserve fat layer as a result. It's nature's way of preparing them for the long, lean winter to come. These brown bears are more fortunate than their southern cousins, the grizzly bears. Only a small number of grizzlies remain below the Canadian border, and those that are left face increasing pressures from man and his activities. In fact, no bear anywhere on earth is safe. All must constantly contend with human progress. Our protection is vital to the lives of these majestic animals. Only with it can we continue to see the amazing spectacle of the River of the Bears. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America. <laughs> Thank you.